cheers to the city, feeling good, we gon' make it to the finish yes. Sweet victory, you hear me, Ali if you feel me, yeah we still running What's up, Pride? Welcome back to part two of our life-changing experiences. Um, this video, Brooklyn will be talking about. Go ahead, say it. I guess you could say it's like a. It was a life-changing dating experience, and the things that happen after. And I'm gonna be talking about my first breakup. I wouldn't really say it's life-changing, but someone could learn a thing or two so I'm not gonna say this person's name so if you hear me say this person a lot just out of respect and privacy for this person <laughs> um, so this I just turned 24 and this all took place uh, about a month or so before I turned 21 um, I've known I had known that person since high school they were a former friend of my cousins and the events to that like pretty much changed my life in a partial positive way and a huge negative way um i guess i'm gonna try to make this long story short as short as i can but still fill you in on a lot um, I guess, I don't know if you really do a lot of, like, soul searching when you're in your teens, but I noticed, like, in my 20s, since I was, like, a legal adult to, like, make my own decisions, I mean, even though you do that when you're 18, but, um, I don't know, I decided to make a really big life-changing thing happen. I let my parents know about it, I let my family know about it, um, things are completely different now, so, yeah, um, like I said, this person was a former friend of my cousin's, I had known this person for many years, kind of lost touch, and then everything kind of, I guess, happened again, um, around the new year like New Year's Eve, texted this person to wish them a happy new year. We got to talking and it all kind of like snowballed from that. Um, we started hanging out a lot um, with my cousin because that was my cousin's friend and texting each other a lot. This person lived really close to us, like we live on a hill and this person used to live at the bottom of the hill so it would literally take like a minute with like the stoplight in between to get from my house to this person's house so we'd hang out a lot while they were off of work and on the weekends and stuff like that and it kind of eventually turned into I guess to like a relationship I don't know we were, we were kind of weird on that part of not making things official and um, then this person ended up moving into our house with us um, because we were spending like so much time together um, my mom and her husband approved of this person moving in with us and um, so everything was good for a while um, this person was cool with our family, and then as things started to get a lot more serious with us, a lot of family didn't accept the relationship with us, and it just turned into something really bad, where I was feuding with certain people in my family, and at that time, like, I just felt like I'm happy with who I'm with, I'm happy with myself. So I could give two craps about what anyone thought at that moment because I've just always been a person that's always like worried about everyone else and not taking care of myself and my happiness and like my own sanity because I'm worried about everyone else. So I was like 
I guess it's not being selfish at all, but I kind of seen looked at it that way. Like I was being selfish for myself because this person genuinely did make me happy during that time. I loved, you know, spending time going on little road trips and, you know, just all of the things that a relationship like that brings. And I lost out on family. Family kind of turned their back on me because they weren't happy with who I was with, what I was doing, and I really didn't care at that point. Um, and that train that changed my life because I'm so about family. Like now, looking back on it and seeing like where I am now in my life. I could kick myself over and over and over and over again because one of the family members that I lost out on, I look at as a second parent. This person has helped me so much like within the last couple of years to better my spirituality and my faith and and I'm crying and I don't know why. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know why. I turned up. Alright, go ahead. And I did. I lost out on. Now I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> like this relationship. That's what I'm gonna call it because I figure you. We were living in under the same roof. If I introduce you to my family, the people that mean the world to me, then you know I'm serious about you. And. That's what I'm going to say. Um, this relationship made me learn a lot about myself, a lot about the people around me. Um, and it changed, and I say that it changed my life because this was like the first really serious thing. Like, I like I said, if you're living in my house, you're around my family all the time, then it's serious. And it changed my life, you know, because I did feel what it was to, like, truly be loved by someone else. Um, to be accepted by someone else. Um, because I don't really open up myself to people very easily. I've learned how to do it more now because I lived in this little shell for so long and being with that person kind of like broke the shell out and I'm more open with people now I'm still kind of reserved but I'm a lot better and yeah it almost made me lose the closest people to me in my life it kind of put a damper on like one of my closest friendships with um, one of my best friends. I don't really take easily to friends so the people that are my friends like I call them my family they're my family and I pushed my best friend to the side because of this person because they weren't comfortable that I was talking to my friends so much and I don't know, it kind of showed me a different side of myself that at that time I did not like and I would never be like that again to a jealous kind of person because um, I'm very, uh, what the heck is that word, instinctive person. So if something tells me that something's wrong, then 99% of the time it is. When my gut was telling me that something wasn't right, it pretty much wasn't. Yeah, so basically I like opened up my life to this person, brought him around my family, into my home, and I felt like at the end of it all, I got like the biggest kick in the face by this person at that time, and I was very, 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 very resentful to this person because I felt like they took my kindness for weakness at that point in my life. Now I look back on it and when everything ended, it didn't end on a good no owl. There was a lot of drama in our house with 
my mom and this person and myself and it just all blew up and in a matter of like 48 hours this person moved out of my house you know they were my best friend at that time and I felt like I lost my best friend my first love and all that in like a matter of 48 hours and it's been a while since I seen that person the last time I seen them was when they were coming to get their stuff out of the house that's the last time I talked to them we live in a small city and it's kind of crazy that we haven't run into each other yet um, other family members have seen this person and I am not spiteful anymore like if my family decided to be friendly with this person then by all means go ahead because I'd be lying now like we were talking about this the other day and um, he knows how I, I felt throughout this whole situation because he was like right in there among everyone in it that was supportive and backed me up a million percent in what I was doing and um, so he knew firsthand how I felt there was after after everything was said and done um, like it just brought me into like a really deep depression and I never thought I would be like a depressed person I started slacking off at work I didn't even want to be around people I'd literally go to work not talk to anyone do what I had to do get off work come home and like lock myself in my room for a good while and I don't drink anymore but at that time like I don't know if a lot of people knew but I was like drinking a lot by myself and just in a deep depression because I was so enraged by everything that had happened leading up to the events of like our splitting things up and all that um so yeah I was just depressed drinking a lot um I didn't want to be around anyone I didn't want to be around my family I didn't want to talk to no one I'm like glued to my phone all the time and I like didn't want to use my phone and I would never say like I was ever suicidal but I was just like you know when you deal with some breakups and some like separations and things like that where this person is like the center of your universe for a while and things did happen with a super 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 fast passionate relationship that this turned into and I just felt like you talk about things like getting married and having a family and things like that and then from it going like that to like you and this person like not even talking a lot this person being away from home a lot like it was just weird and um i'm someone that feels like there has there has to be communication at all times with people um so when things were like kind of done secretive and all that then i was just kind of like trying to fight for my relationship because I felt like I gave so much of myself to this person and so much of my self to this relationship whatever you want to call it I like was fighting with my family I was fighting with my friends because I just believed so much in this relationship and then to feel like I got kicked in the face multiple times when everything was said and done it killed me so you kind of go into those depressive thoughts like, you know, well, I wasn't good enough. What could I have done better if I wouldn't have talked about this, if I wouldn't have done that? Um, like with me, I'm very much a person that if I'm interested in you, you are my main focus. I am not talking to anyone else. Like it's you and only you. If I'm with you, I'm with you and only with you. I don't believe in cheating. I don't believe in talking to anyone else when you're in a relationship because to me that's like so 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 wrong so to just feel like I was done wrong by that person like killed me and yeah I was just really depressed and I lost myself like we grew up in church our family has a very strong 
Christian faith, like a lot of people know. So I just lost that. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to hear about anything like that. And I was dealing with that for a couple of months by myself and it hurt a lot because I didn't want to open up to anyone about how I was feeling. I didn't want to seem like I was weak. Um, and I didn't want to burden anyone with like my problems because of course everyone goes through breakups. Everyone deals with things differently. As you could see, I'm a very emotional person. So it was hard to express how I feel. Sometimes I'm not the like the most expressive person. So that changed my life because I lost myself in this relationship. Um, I lost every sense of who I was, every sense of what I knew was right and what was wrong. Um, like I said, family means the absolute world to me and I lost my family because of this, but it all built me up to be even stronger now. Um, I know the right and the wrong thing to do. I know how to express myself, how to deal with things a lot better. Um, it took me a long time to build things up with my family again. Um, it took me a long time to build my faith back up and one of the people that I didn't talk to for a long time was my auntie and she's like my second mom. I call her my spiritual mom because she just, um, you know, one of those aunts that will never shut her door on you, will always welcome you in, you know, make sure you got something to eat if you're good emotionally. Um, so to lose that over someone else killed me. And I looked back at it, and I look back at it sometimes even now, and I'm like, what were you thinking? Like, why would you put someone on a pedestal above your family? Because family is everything to me, like I keep saying. Um, and that changed my life for the better. All of that crap that I went through with this person, and I'm not even putting the full blame on that person, because I did do stuff that led to the blow up with everything. I take full responsibility for that too, so I'm not trying to make this person seem like they're trash because they're not. Um, it was just a learning experience. Everyone has to go through it. Everyone will go through it. Maybe not as bad as I did, but eventually people will deal with it. But like I said, it made me the stronger woman that I am now. My faith in God is so much better than it is before. My walk with God is so much better than it was before. My relationship with my family is so much better than it was before. I don't drink anymore. I don't go around parties anymore because that just brought out a side of me that I hated and I never want to see that that side of me again. So I cut all that stuff out of my life. I was like just a completely per different person back then. Drank a lot. A lot of it was in secret. I cussed a lot. I was so negative. But now, like I said, I don't drink. I don't cuss. I'm a completely different person. I'm so much happier now because I feel like I've now found myself at 24. Like I know who I am. I know what I stand for. I know that my foundation and my faith and who I am is so much stronger now and that nothing and no one could ever change that. No relationship, no event, nothing will change the person that I am now because I found who I am. I found the home in myself that it took me many, many years to find. Um, so that all changed my life for the better. We were talking about this the other day, like, if I miss this person. I don't miss that relationship at all, but we were really good friends before everything like that happened and I'd be lying if I said that I didn't miss that friendship. If this person came out and reached out to me and said, hey Brooklyn, I really want you back in my life as a friend. 
would you consider that? Absolutely. But like I said, I haven't seen this person, talked to this person. They could hate my guts now, but it's all love on my end. I have nothing but respect for this person now. Um, there's absolutely like no hard feelings anymore. I wish this person all the love and success in their life and, you know, just all the blessings and all that now. And that's my life changing experience i'm gonna talk about this pretty quick um it's not that like crazy and you know i didn't go through all the crap that she went through be talking about my first breakup um i think it was like freshman year or sophomore year um i was brand new to this school in the school district so i didn't really know the the kids there and stuff at the high school that i went to and um didn't really have any friends going into that school and I happened to meet this girl kinda hit it off and we talked for a while and then we started dating um, so I think it was a freshman or sophomore in high school I think it was around it might have been around like spring break of freshman year and uh, we dated for about eight months seven months eight months around that around that long and um, I guess we kind of had a good relationship but I wouldn't say it was because I guess there were a lot of fights and a lot of misunderstanding between us um, keep in mind at the time I was about 15 14 maybe 14 or 15 I don't remember like um, so I guess like the relationship wasn't that serious but to me it was serious because it lasted longer than most high school relationships do um and I guess things just progressively started getting worse and worse between us and it was we came to like a mutual decision to break up uh, I guess we weren't just happy with each other anymore so we split up um but like during that breakup I felt like I don't know how to like I guess I felt alone because I never really went through a breakup I never had a girlfriend in in middle school and stuff like that so I guess I never really experienced anything like that and I took it really hard um, like how she said she got depressed I got depressed um, and I would always be in my room um, listening to sad music, shout out to Sam Smith for making the world's most depressing music, um, I still listen to it, but that music, like, I'll be laying in bed crying and stuff, but I think, how do I say it, bad things happen for good reasons, um, me and this girl broke up, then I became depressed and stuff, and then, um, Maybe about a month later, I started talking to this other girl because my friend int introduced me to her, and we hit it off pretty good. She was into the same things that I was. She liked zombies. She was nerdy like me. She liked Batman and all the superhero stuff, Lord of the Rings, stuff like that. So I was like, dang, this girl's perfect. Two years later, we're still dating, guys. I went from an eight month relationship that was kind of crappy and stuff. Uh, I don't think any of my family really liked her. Um, at the time it seemed like they did, but now that like that's in the past, they all say that they didn't like her. Um, but yeah, but now I'm in a relationship. I've been with my new girlfriend, not my, well, I wouldn't say new girlfriend. <laughs> I've been with my girlfriend, Cheyenne, for um, three years this year, this December. So. I think all bad things happen for good reasons. Um, I guess, like, I know they say that you, you're too young to be dating or you don't know what love is, but I guess when you've been with somebody for more than a year, you kind of find yourself, you kind of, I guess, learn what love is. And I gotta say, guys, I'm in love. Um, and I, I think, just have to say, I so approve of Cheyenne and Tony dating. I love her. Um, she is a part of the family, the 
Everyone in our family loves her. She's super respectful, super friendly. She's super shy, but that's all right. Um, and you know, it's really serious when our older brother, because we have a niece and a nephew, they're two-year-old twins, and you know it's really serious in that he approves when he lets the twins call you auntie. Mm-hmm. Because he's very selective over... Yeah. Yeah, I never, like, like I said, it was that relationship in the past was kind of like my first serious relationship, but not really. But this one that I'm in right now is, like, serious, serious. Like, I feel like this relationship is going to go far. Um, I guess thoughts of marriage and stuff like that have gone through my head because uh, there are people in our family that have had high school lovers and now they're married to them and have kids my brother was one of them he has what he's dated his wife for like i don't know how many years like 11 years and they finally got married not too long ago like a year or two ago not even a year or two like last year so they finally got married last year and then we have cousins on our dad's side that um met in high school they dated throughout high school and now they have a kid together. Engaged. Um, our parents met in high school. And they started dating. And if you hear barking, it's my dog. He's sleeping. <laughs> um, but yeah, just like I said, bad things happen for good reasons. God closes one door to open a new one to lead you to a different point in your life that will set you on a better journey. Um So if you ever feel like, you know what, you're not good enough for somebody or something like that, just cut off the relationship. Don't believe yourself. Just cut it off, you know. Like, it hurts worse to be in a toxic relationship than to keep going and going and, like, breaking up and getting back together and then keep on doing that. It's just, not only do you make yourself look bad, but you kind of make your whole situation look really bad, too. Mm -hmm. Um... Because obviously, if you guys keep breaking up, then that person's not not the one for you. Um, there's over 7 billion people in this world. You don't need to be crying over, over one. one. That's so, a tough yeah. lesson to be learned. And you're going to have to go through those things. I completely agree. One door will close. And another one will open. God will set you on a path for someone else completely different completely better for you because you are worth it someone will find all of your flaws and your imperfections perfection and i still haven't found that person but i leave all my faith in god that i will who knows who it might be someone that's in my life already and i just haven't realized it yet but who knows but like you said, don't spend your life crying over someone. That was a lesson well learned, and like yep. I said, it's all a growing experience. You have to deal with things to better yourself and just to learn. Um, all life is is a learning experience. Your whole life, you're learning new things. But like she said, um, she's not really, she don't have any resentment towards her ex um, I don't really have any towards mine, even though sometimes when we do see each other, you know, so throw dirty looks and crap like that. Um, but hey, I think that's what exes do, right? Um, if you're immature, then yeah. of course. I, I'm happy with who I'm with. I'm extremely happy with who I'm with. Um, I love her to death. I love her family. Um, I hope her family loves me. <laughs> but guys, relationships, they might last forever, they might not. It's life. They could be complicated, but it's all a learning experience. Yep. It's all a part of life. And it journey. makes you stronger. Definitely. And breakups could also lead to your new favorite music artist. Sam Smith. Well, that wraps up this video, you guys. I hope you guys like this. Once again, it did get a little emotional. Sorry about that. Um, Can't help my emotions. Hopefully I made it a little better, you guys. Um, <laughs> but anyway, hope you guys liked it. If you did, click that like button. and I'll Comment down below if you've been through any breakups and how you guys handled those breakups. And um, 
maybe comment if you guys want advice. We can make advice videos, if that makes sense. Because I'm excellent for you. at it. I I'm great. With my age, I'm going to be 18. I have some amazing advice, even if I haven't been in your situation. Mm -hmm. Um, Pretty wise for my age. But anyway, hope you guys like this video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. It'll mean so much. And also, make sure you hit that notification bell so that it notifies you every time we upload a new video. We're going to try to keep uploading sporadically throughout the week because we've been slacking on that. And we're going to put out some better content for you. If you guys got video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Follow us on our social media. Snapchat is where to hit me up. Or Instagram if you want. But yeah, follow Snapchat us. is pretty good. Yeah, follow us on our Snapchat and our Instagrams. They'll be in the description below. And I also want to give a special shout out to one of our really good subscribers. Leslie Plus 3, guys. Yeah, guys. Um, she sent me some questions for a Q&A with my girlfriend. Uh, we still haven't recorded that because we've been slacking. Sorry for that, Leslie. But we will get to it, hopefully, by before she uh, leaves for spring break. Um, that video will be out soon. And we were going to make a Saturday Scares video, but yesterday was kind of busy. Was yesterday, God's, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, it was my godson's birthday, and we spent all the day with our family, and we just didn't get around to it. Yeah. So we apologize. We're going to start picking up where the heck we are supposed to be getting more videos out for you. The grind ain't gonna stop you guys. Grind won't stop. Keep your head up. Keep your heart strong. Bless, Bless up. up. You know what you're worth? Now go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that.